If you haven't started preparing for the UCAT exam and you don't really know where to begin, then this video is for you. Today, we are going to be talking about how to create a UCAT plan to help you prepare strategically and effectively for your exam. The UCAT is a challenging exam, not necessarily because of the types of questions that you're being asked, but mostly because of the time limit for each section. There are five different sections in the exam. They are verbal reasoning, abstract reasoning, quantitative reasoning, decision-making, and a situational judgment test. And each of these ask a specific type of question within a specific time frame. Because time is the biggest factor when it comes to the UCAT exam, it is so important that you learn different techniques and strategies in order to make the most out of your time and score as highly as you possibly can. Now, when it comes to preparing a plan for the UCAT, the earlier that you get started, the better. This is something that we work very closely with with our students at FutureDoc. And we see time and time again that the more time students spend practicing, the better their result is. So you might be asking then, how long do I need to prepare for? And that will depend on many things, including your academic background and whether you've sat the UCAT exam before. If you've never sat the UCAT before, it's probably gonna take you a little bit longer to prepare for because learning the different types of questions in each of the sections is new to you. So naturally that's gonna take more time. But if you have sat the UCAT exam before, then you're going to be more familiar with the content and the question styles. So it might not take you as long. It's also really important to remember that you don't want to overdo your revision. There is such a thing as doing too much work, especially for this exam. If you spend more time than you need to, you may find yourself feeling overwhelmed and like nothing that you're doing is really working anymore. So try to be sensible about the time frame and the amount of work that you're putting into it. You do though need to take into account all of the other things that you might have going on in your life. So you might be studying for your A-levels or maybe you're studying your degree at the moment. You may also have a part-time or even a full-time job. And I'm sure that you'll have friends and families and hobbies and many other commitments in your life. This will all play into how much time you can actually dedicate to the UCAT. So having a realistic and a tailored approach is key. Okay, so bearing all of this in mind, let's now get into how to create a personalized plan for your UCAT revision. Here at FutureDoc, we break down the revision period into three main phases. In phase one, students familiarize themselves with the material, with the content, with the types of questions, and you learn different techniques for how to do well. I would use the FutureDoc UCAT course to help familiarize yourself with all of this information. And we have a FutureDoc UCAT playlist for you to use for your studies. You will then move on to phase two, which is where you start to use a platform or different resources to help you practice these questions. This phase is key because what we advise students is that you practice doing all of the questions untimed, which is really, really important, and make sure that you're aiming to score 80% whenever you're answering the question. We also advise that students focus on one section at a time, as this is going to increase your productivity and make it more effective when you study, as opposed to trying to do all of the sections at the same time. And then finally, moving on to phase three, this is where you're starting to feel more confident and you move on to timed practice. You can start by just timing how long it takes you to get through all of the questions in one section and then slowly cutting down that time until you are answering all of the questions within the specified time limit. One big thing that we highly recommend to students is that you do a calibration mock exam nice and early, especially in phase three. This is gonna give you a true idea of what the exam is like and it will give you a reflection of what you're actually scoring. You can use the UCAT official test papers, which are available on the website for this. Throughout phase three, you can keep using some of the mock exams, but remember to save at least two for the final week. Even if you are not sitting the UCAT exam for a while, there's absolutely no harm in starting to create a UCAT study plan from today. So you can go ahead and open up your calendar and you can even do this while watching this video. The first thing that you want to do is find out exactly how much time you have. The UCAT exam can be taken between July and September and must be taken in the year of application. Ideally though, you want to sit the exam sooner rather than later. I would avoid booking the exam right at the end of September. This is because when it gets to that point in September, you're going to be working on other things for your application, 
including refining your medical or dental school choices and writing your personal statement. These things take time and focus. And bear in mind that you might want to have a little bit of a break after the UK exam and before you start any studies that you might have in September. So let's take a provisional date sometime in July. It could be like the 28th of July, for example. And this date doesn't have to be set in stone, but it's a good idea to have a day that you're working towards and that you're aiming for. Also, if you know that you have a holiday or an important event coming up, then you can bear that in mind when you are booking your UCAT exam so you can work around your schedule. So now that we've chosen the 28th of July as our provisional date, what you need to do is calculate how many weeks you have from today until the 28th of July. You might have, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 weeks, and that's okay. The main thing is that you know how much time you have. Perhaps it is a little bit too early for you to start your revision, and that's okay. As I mentioned, you don't want to burn out, but then what you can do is set an ideal start date for when you want to start your revision. But if you are ready to get going with your revision, then that's when you schedule in those three phases that we spoke about earlier. Phase one normally takes students about four to five weeks. Remember, this is where you're going through all of the content. So typically students spend one week on each section. Again, you can use feature doc videos and playlists as well as UCAT official books and resources to help you throughout this phase. Once you have scheduled in a start and an end date for phase one, you can then move on to scheduling phase two. This phase can take students between four to six weeks. And again, it really depends on your specific situation. Remember that in phase two, you'll be doing untimed practice. And the key is that you're aiming for 80% accuracy each time. Finally, you'll want to schedule maybe four to five weeks for phase three. This is the phase where you'll be doing timed practice as well as four mock exams. So try not to overdo it with the time because again, that can lead to burnout and that's something that you want to avoid. So now just to give you guys some tips on what to be mindful of when you're creating your UCAT study plan. The first thing is to make sure that you schedule in any holidays or events or important dates in early. Make sure that these aren't interfering with any other important commitments that you might have. Secondly, don't forget to take time out to look after your mental health. The medical school application process is a long and challenging one, so you need to be protecting yourself and looking after your mental health in order to make sure that you are resilient throughout. And thirdly, make sure that you are as realistic as possible about the amount of time that you're going to be able to dedicate to studying for the UCAT. If you are at school or at university all day, Monday to Friday, then it's unrealistic to think that you're going to get home every day and do six hours of revision. One to two hours per evening is enough as long as you're doing this consistently. Remember, it's a marathon and not a sprint. The idea isn't that you do everything in one day, but that you slowly build up your technique and your resilience. And finally, before we end this video, I want to give you some UCAT tips that I specifically give to students. I always tell them to tackle each section at a time Make sure that you have covered all of the content and that you feel comfortable with each section before moving on to something else. I also remind all of my students not to forget about the SJT. It's really easy to think, oh, that's just common sense. But you'd be surprised how many people end up getting band threes and fours. And you need to be aiming for band one. So make sure that you don't forget about it and that you are constantly practicing SJT questions. I also tell students to practice doing the questions on a screen. The UK exam is computer based. So the sooner that you start practicing on a computer and getting used to the format and the layout of the questions, then the better. Also, one of the biggest keys and the thing that probably makes the biggest difference for students is to make sure that you are reviewing the questions that you get wrong. It's so important to understand why you got a question wrong and how you can get it right next time. This is where many students fail. And I've certainly done this many times before when I've been preparing for an exam. It's so easy to look at a question that you didn't get right and to just move on to the next one. But what makes the biggest difference is understanding why you got it wrong and how you can get it right for next time. This will typically happen in phase two of your UCAT plan. So make sure that you leave adequate time for you to do this. And finally, don't get discouraged if you don't see an improvement or notice progress instantly, especially during the start of phase two and phase three. It takes time for you to figure out how to successfully implement different strategies and techniques. 
and that's not going to happen overnight. So again, don't be discouraged, keep working hard and you'll see the results over time. So that was everything on how to create a UCAS study plan for your exam. It might be too early to start preparing for the exam, but it's not too early to plan for it. If you want more support or if you want us to help you, then feel free to check out our website for more information. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time.